So, I know this is like super late, but this is going to be my review of the 2019 uh, remake of Pet Cemetery. Now, um, this, this was just okay. I'm going to go out and say it. this was just an okay remake. I mean, I wasn't a, the biggest fan of the original film, because that one is really freaking boring. That one, the original film is just kind of boring until the last, like, final act of the film. But... And admittedly, there is some... Like, everything leading up from Gage's death to the end of the film is where you get invested. Everything else, no. This film kind of feels the same way, but there is some saving graces. Like, I would probably watch this before I watched the original film again. Um, my biggest problem with this film is that it kind of had the same problem that Amazing Spider-Man 2 had, in that the trailers showed way too freaking much of the movie... Um, in the trailers. Like, they showed way too much over and over, because there are some legit scenes in here that could have been really good scares had it not been for the, you know, the trailers like, oh, I already know what's gonna happen here. Oh, I already know what's gonna happen here. That's the problem, the biggest flaw with this movie is that the trailers killed it for this movie. This is the problem, is that they killed this movie early. Um... The cast is fine. I really feel bad for Jason Clark. first off, the actor who plays Lewis Creed, and he's recently been doing a lot of horror movies like this and the Winchester movie, and he's... I really like Jason Clark as an actor. I think he's severely... Uh, Jason Clark is severely underrated as an actor. Um, but he has just been in some really bad movies re recently. He has just been in some really recent, um, not, you know, just... Medi he's just been in either mediocre or bad movies, and I feel bad for him because Jason Clark, um, especially him, he really carries this movie. He definitely carries um, this movie on his shoulders. John Lithgow is Judd Crandall. No disrespect to John Lithgow, first and foremost, but he he was just kind of okay as as um, as Judd. Mostly because it's really hard to follow up with uh, when you when you uh, have to follow in the shoes of the guy who played Herman Munster. It's really hard to play against, you know, sometimes that is better. It's really hard to beat, uh, because his, del you know, when, uh, when the, uh, you know, forgetting the original actor's name, but when he said it, like, there's this great delivery, and he actually invested in the main accent. Lithgow didn't do that, and his delivery was just kind of like, mm, all right. So that was my problem. Is that uh, um, Lithgow is good, but he but it's again really hard to follow up against. Um, it's really hard to follow up against uh, Herman Munster, right? <laughs> anyway, um, the, um, the another standout was the actress. I'm forgetting the young actress's name, but um, the the girl who played Ellie, who in this con in this remake in this remake, she's the one who go who gets buried in the pet cemetery and comes back and not Gage. Um, she was really good. You really get invested into her as a character, where you really feel like she's this nine this very spunky nine year old girl, and then when she comes back, she's terrifying. Like it's like her how she moves in some cases. I don't know if that's her or like special effects. I don't know. But she really does the corpse angle very well. She really, like, she can go from just um, sweet to terrifying, and that's really good in a child actor, when you can just switch on a dime like that. And that's very, um, I very much like that. The kills in here are, are way more uh, graphic in here. They are very more graphic, um, but not too... To an, to an insane level. I think the only one that's really insane is Judd's death. Um, especially one scene that just made me cringe, like, even more than it did in the original movie. You probably know which scene I'm talking about. I also like how they actually follow some of the book, in that they actually, um, they actually follow the, uh, the whole thing with the Wendigo. Because if you guys remember in the book, it's, it's, um, the, the, uh, Indian tribe that li the Native American tribe who lived here, um, who lived in uh, that little town of Maine, Ludlow, there was a Native American tribe, and they left because the spirit of the Wendigo cursed their uh, burial mounds. And they actually mention, you actually, like, address the Wendigo, but they don't do it as much as they did in the book. Not, But at least they address it, as opposed to the original film, who just, 
doesn't do that at all. In here, they actually like, no, it's probably is the Windigo that is doing this, but I would have liked... I think you do... If I remember right, you do get to see a, a quick glimpse of it. Um, so that's cool. Um, I will also say that... Um, again, the trailers just really killed a lot of the interest of this movie for me. This, this really killed a lot of interest... Uh, I still wanted to see it, because I was like, maybe the trailer, like, not everything, maybe not everything was spoiled in the trailers, like it was for Amazing Spider-Man 2. I was totally wrong. I was completely, totally wrong. But the ending, however, did make me go, oh, okay, we're going that angle. Um, apparently the alternate ending is a little more depressing, but this one made, was, a uh, like, at least they didn't spoil the, the ending of the movie, like like Amazing Spider-Man 2 did, and that was genuinely good. Like, I was, um, that last act made me go, oh, wow. The actress who plays Lewis's wife, uh, man, she is boring. But then again, so was the original actress, um, uh, the original actress from the other movie, from the original movie. The Zelda scene, the scenes with her sister Zelda are creepy, but they're kind of, at the same time, they're predictable. They are very much predictable. Uh, Church is actually very scary. Like, Church definitely feels more like a threat in here than he did in the original film. Where in that one, Church is just kind of like moseying around and like the mascot of this movie. Here, this Church is like malicious. This one, like, clearly has a plan in motion for a lot of, you know, for a lot of things. He definitely has this kind of, um, just kind of malicious intent, and you see it throughout the movie. Um,. Other than that, there's really nothing I can talk about with this movie that hasn't already been said. Um, I do con like I, I think I might like talk about some spoilers. Like again, uh, this movie's been out for a while, and I've I've watched this, but I still haven't watched Spider-Man: Far From Home. Fuck me, right? Anyway, so um, I don't know. Like also, I did. did there's clearly because they clearly wanted to bank on. Paramount clearly wanted to bank on uh, uh, it that's coming out later this year. They they make some straight up references to uh, Pennywise. They well not Pennywise. I mean Maine, uh, like yeah, the the town of it, uh, the town from. Ugh, I'm getting tongue tied. The town from the book it. There we go. And in there, uh, you do see some mentions of dairy here and there. Um, if you look really hard, because clearly they wanted to bank on this, uh, it's not, like, to the, it's like, like, not ad nauseum, like, they're not trying to do a Stephen King shared universe that's already taken by, on Amazon by Castle Rock, which I haven't seen yet, but, so I don't know if that's good or not, if anyone's seen Castle Rock on, on Hulu, I don't, why did I say Amazon, I meant Hulu, if anyone's seen Castle Rock on, on Hulu, is that any good? I generally don't know. All in all, um, it's, um... It's just, this is just okay. I think, again, much like with the original film, the the last act is definitely what sells this movie. Like, when the car when the girl is brought back, that's when everything kicks up. But, um, I wouldn't purposely, like, um, if you're, unless you're, like, a diehard Stephen King a fan and want to see how this goes, I would say check it out. But really, this is more like, eh. It's just, eh. Again, I feel like this could have gone over a lot smoother had not um, the trailers just ruined everything. So if you guys saw the 2019 uh, remake of Pet Cemetery, just comment below, let me know what you guys thought, and once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I'm out.